Greetings everybody, this is Etho, and welcome back guys once again to another Let's Play episode. So check this out, I have uh, set a new record for myself. Ever since the villagers changed, I've always wondered, like, could you totally lock out the trades with a villager? And I got this cleric to lock out five of the seven trades, which I've never done before. <laughs> so there's a slim chance here we might actually do it. I thought I would start recording and just see if it happens. So here we go. Do it one at a time. No, it's, it unlocked them. Okay, so five's my new record. We didn't get beyond that. All right, that was kind of anticlimactic. <laughs> what is your guys' record? Have you gone beyond five? Is it possible? I think it is, but very unlikely. So, uh, the plan for today, guys, we're going to be working on Slab City some more here. Try to figure out what we're doing with it a little bit better. <laughs> uh, I just introduced the idea last time, and you guys seem to really enjoy it, so that's cool. Um, it's a simple idea, but I think it has a lot of potential. Looking through the comments, the main thing you guys mention is, oh, I can't believe Etho is working with, with even numbers. He's crazy. <laughs> and I was doing that because I wanted the these slabs or tiles or whatever we're building here to align with the, the chunk borders here. I thought that would be a cool thing. And we never build with even numbers. It's, it would be, make it look a little different because you use different patterns and stuff when you work with even numbers. But, you know, I thought about it more after you guys mentioned it, It's like, yeah, I think we'll switch over to odd. Because <laughs> anytime you do, like, technical stuff, like with water streams or minecart tracks or redstone, building with even is just terrible. It really is. Um, so I think it's a good idea to change. We're going to go to 9x9x5 nine by nine by tiles instead of 8x8x4. Eight by eight by Aha, very good. So it looks almost exactly the same to what we had before, but we have switched over to odd numbers, 9x9x5 nine by nine by tiles, uh, but they share borders with each other. So for example, this this is the border with this tile, but it's also... The border of this tile um, so it's like 9 by 9 by 5 minus 1 on all the dimensions so 8 by 8 by 4 which is what we had before so it's really no change except we have odd numbers now does that make sense sure it does makes total sense <laughs> uh -huh. okay so what I want to do now guys I want to start adding some details to this maybe not to the point where it's totally finished but uh, so it looks a little bit better, because right now it's really plain. Uh, and then we'll start doing some other building here. I'm going to do something I don't think we've ever done in this series. Or at least I can't recall any time I've done this. We're going to use jungle planks. Oh my goodness. <laughs> if you don't know, I actually don't like jungle planks. Um, but I'm starting to not hate them as much. I think I think we'll try it with this build, just for some variation. Um, and maybe let's do our ugly brick thing over here instead. Because every base needs an ugly brick thing. Like, no question. Has to be done. Let's try... Just do a simple thing here. Um, maybe some stairs. We'll just do a few things here together, and then I'll do a bunch off camera. And then we'll do some building. Okay, because I do want to make a lot of progress on this today, too. So let's make this come over like this. And then... Uh-huh. Perfect. Amazing. Beautiful. And we'll put that there. Then I'll do dark oak. Like a so. Dark oak here. And then orange clay in the background. Because that looks amazing. And we end up with something like this. So a lot of the stuff we're doing is this going to be a trial to begin with. Like, I don't know if we're actually going to keep it. But I'm going to try keep it there for a while and see if we like it after after a bit here still. So I'm just going to add some last couple decorations to it. And I think let's actually get rid of that and try to get the dark oak showing. So I made some slabs. No, that doesn't work. Uh, what if we put stairs? I'm out of stairs. Uh-oh. Back to the crafting table. Okay, get a couple more of those. Brick is one of those materials I don't have a lot of, so I don't want to get too carried away with it either. 
looks a bit better. <laughs> uh, I'm going to try... We're not going to do it exactly like the man cave where we do both sides with oak, but I'm going to try to do just one side here with oak. Because I think it'll look a bit better. We want to keep some stone brick with this build, though. We don't want to get rid of it all. For sure. Um, so we get that going. Oak is good because it matches the, the path block there. And it'll go with a few other blocks we're using. So I, I kind of like that, right? We could even mix in some jungle wood with this. All right, so check it out here. We've added some details to our builds. And I think it's feeling a bit better. I think it looks a bit better now. But it's not all the way there, is it? At least that's my feeling. I feel like something's not quite right with it. <laughs> but we're off to hopefully a good start. Uh, so you see we got the jungle wood mixed in here. I've added some coarse dirt in places, some brown concrete, some flowers and grass. Uh, underneath here I added a a design with the slabs. Uh, this feels very plain up here still. We should do something with that. Maybe turn it into a water tower with a pool of water you can see at the top. Right now I think it's still just grass there, isn't it? Let's, let's just double check. Yeah, so maybe we'll put like a pond in the top there for a bit of variation too. I think that'd be cool. Oops. And made sort of a, a door thing here. This is going to go into a building, I think. And yeah. <laughs> okay, so I have expanded over here. We're going to start in a new territory. We're going to build our very first farm uh, with our new place here. A lot of the farms we're going to build to begin with are going to be pretty simple, I think. Not like anything super crazy or super automated. Just our basic uh, needs. And one of the things I think we need is a tree farm, so let's focus on that. So, I'm going to semi-automate it, though. I do want to try to do something a little bit cool with it. Um, observers. We need observers. So I'll try to show you the plan. Uh, I want to be able to plant a tree, like right here, have it automatically grow, and then push the wood out of the hole up to this level here. Kind of like we did in our, our brown mushroom farm we built recently. Although I did just design a new thing for doing it, so it's going to be slightly different. Because I couldn't remember how I did that. <laughs> and I was too lazy to go check. Okay, so we're going to have an observer block check whenever uh, the tree is planted. And then we want it to shoot out bone mill at the tree out of a dispenser here. So this will be full of bone mill. Okay, so I just uh, ripped up the ground here. So I can show you how to do the redstone for this real quick, hopefully. Uh, first thing we're going to do is put a repeater here. So now when we plant the tree, you can see it activates that repeater. And we want to send this a bunch of pulses. So first thing we'll do is set up a, a timer, a long delay or whatever. So now when we, when we do this, you see it slowly fades out there. So it'll keep this comparator active for quite a while. And then we do a pulse pulser like this. So signal goes around and back to itself in subtract mode and it'll send the pulse to this constantly so now ta -da! <laughs> all right so that'll be our tree growth system very good all right so the next thing we want to add is some way of pushing the wood blocks out of the hole here because after the tree grows there's going to be two logs in there and like if you go chop them down Guess what? You're stuck down here. <laughs> so as a little convenience thing, we'll try to push him out with the double extender that goes upwards, right? Um, the reason we're going two blocks down, though, is like if we were to try to just grow the trees on the surface here, you have to have the dispenser next to it like that, right? And it's going to be sticking out of the ground. Plus, you need all the redstone to, to do the tricks. So that's going to be on the surface, too. And... By putting it two blocks down, we can hide everything and, and try to make it look nice. Uh, even if you do it like this, where you have the dispenser facing up to a tree like that that has bone meal in, it doesn't hit the sapling, it hits the dirt block. So that won't grow the tree. Uh, otherwise, you could hide it underground pretty easy. But unfortunately, that's not the case. If you have a grass block here, it tries to bone meal the grass. 
to get the sparkles, but it won't grow the tree either. Aha, uh -huh, nothing happens. Anyways, let's get to it here. So, I prepped the area here again for our double extender, our vertical double extender. And what we got to do, this is the block that the sapling grows on. So we want to get two sticky pistons facing up under it, like so. And now we got to activate them in the right sequence. Um, so the trick is to put a block there next to the dirt block. You got a block there and and then what? I think a regular piston goes there. An observer facing the other way. We want the observer to get activated by the piston arm extending. It's really hard to place in the way you want sometimes. <laughs> okay, so this is the side that detects it. So when the piston arm goes up, this detects it, sends power to that, and that'll activate this piston when it's up here. Make sense? Yes, it does. Okay. Uh, now to activate this in the right sequence, we set this to four, and then we do a branching path. So uh, I think four for this one and 13 ticks on this side. So that's four repeaters. We'll leave one at one and do that. So if we send a, a pulse to the wire here, it'll make the block go up and then make it come down. It activates it twice. Let's try it out. Oh, observer. Ta-da. <laughs> okay, let's let's check it out again. That's like as fast as you can do it with this. So we still got uh, one last thing we got to do with our design here. We have to detect when the tree grows uh, over here and then tell that uh, double extender to activate, basically. Uh, we could check using this observer, like when the sapling turns into a wood log, then cause something to happen. But that's actually really difficult to do. It gets really complicated. So we're going to do it the old-fashioned way, where we're just going to set up a second thing here that goes like this. And we keep this powered so that when the log appears over here, when the sapling turns into a log, then the signal can pass through. And then... From here, we tell it to go to that extender, basically. Uh, the problem is, if we do that, we run into another problem. Those double, that double extender there, the piston comes up to here, and then this repeater powers it, so it prevents it from being able to retract. So we have to unpower this at the, the right time, too, in order for that thing not to jam. <laughs> so this gets a little bit more complicated because of that. We have to add an RS NOR latch here. So piston and piston here. And basically they when this pushes the block over, this gets unpowered. Um, and then we just gotta time it just right. So the timing is four. Set that to four and then we need four repeaters set at four here. Okay. And that keeps account of like how long it takes the double extender to extend and retract basically uh, next thing we got to do you see we got a trap door down here like we saw before if we send this a pulse it activates this twice and oh that didn't work <laughs> is it because of that thing did that mess it up uh-oh what oh Okay, it worked that time. Hmm. Well, basically, from this, we're supposed to branch down to here. And I don't know why that didn't work, actually. Let's just see what happens if we put a log there. Oh, that was good. That was good. That's what it's supposed to do. Okay. Try again. Looks good. Okay, we might be fine. <laughs> Let's give it a test test run here. So we're going to plant a sapling. Yeah, I think we're good to go. Okay, there we go. So I copied our design three more times here. We're going to have four trees in total. And the reason for that is just because we have no way of clearing the leaves with our, our gizmo here. So they have to despawn naturally, which, which takes a bit of time, right? Um, if you're just doing one tree at a time, waiting for it to despawn... 
it's not really you're not gonna use it <laughs> even four is kind of on the low side but it's something well we got it uh, covered over here so we're gonna do our first real test with this now we find out if it's actually practical or not <laughs> you can design something and then when you go to use it, it's like well that's cool but uh, I don't know we'll try it with the different different trees here too so spruce works Oh, it did stop. Okay, good. Whew. Acacia might be a troublesome one. That looks fine. Okay, I think we tried oak already. Birch trees. Oh. Birch is good. And jungle trees. So we can't do dark oak with this. That's the only limitation. But this is something I wanted for our base too. Just having a nice open field here. So if we want to plant uh, two by two trees, we have a place to grow it. You know, because a lot of our base is going to be these little 9x9 nine nine areas. And this is a, like, two of them, two by two of them, right? We've got quite a bit more space. So we chop it down. And you see, we don't have to go down there to get the wood. Uh, we might want to put a block over top or some glass so that uh, we can reach it all. Yeah, because I, I don't really like that, having to pillar up to, to grab it, right? So I was thinking of something here. I don't I don't really like this, having a chest with the saplings in, because you gotta go over here and grab four or however many you're gonna plant. And then like put them back and what I would like is some way of dispensing four saplings at a time for whichever one we choose. Uh, so we're gonna put put a device over here for doing that. And I just figured out how to do it and it's this is one of the jankiest redstone jobs I've ever done. <laughs> but it works. It's like really weird the way I got this thing to, to work. So I think we will go in a little bit here. Just so it's not totally flat walls either, you know. And I'm going to use dark oak for now, but we'll probably change this to something else later. But this is our shape like this. And then we're going to have six dispensers for the six different types of trees. Or droppers, I mean, over here. And then we'll do it like this, where we have some stone brick or some other block down here. Boop, 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 boop. Like so. And then let's grab six buttons. And we'll align them over here. So basically, press the button here, we get four saplings for whatever tree goes there. Okay. Oh, you know what, guys? As we do this, I got a story I could tell you too today. Well, not really a story, more like a personal experience, um, which might get you encouraged or motivated. Um, so, about a month ago, I made the decision that I'm going to get into exercising, like really commit to it. Um, in general, I've, I'm in decent shape, but which one are we missing? Dark Oak? Let's go up there. I'm in decent shape, but over the years I've been getting in worse and worse shape, to be honest. Like, I used to play sports, I used to do tennis, and, and baseball, and hockey, and all kinds of stuff. Um, man, it's hard to focus. <laughs> but uh, all of that has kind of ended. I also was, like, very physical with my work and stuff before, and doing YouTube, I'm sitting in a chair all day, right? So it's not, uh, it's not so good. Um, so I decided I want to get into exercising. I keep hearing it's really good for you, both physically and mentally. You should try to exercise at least 15 minutes every day. So finally, I decide to commit because honestly, I was starting to feel really sluggish, like no energy. Even if I had a good night's sleep, I was like tired all the time. And I had, I had that couch potato feeling, you know, where you go to where you're sitting down and you don't want to get up. <laughs> I kept like feeling that. It was like, something's not quite right, right? So I decided to get into ex exercising. Um, so I've been doing about five to 15 minutes of exercise every day for the last month or so. And honestly, it has been way better than I expected. Like the results are way better than I could have even dreamed. Um, for one thing, I've, I've gained a lot of muscle mass, which is nice, um, but especially in terms of energy and stuff, oh, it's so much, I'm like never tired now, <laughs> like uh, unless I didn't get enough sleep, right? But I feel good in general, and I 
and in a good mood much better mood than I was before in general so that's really cool um, and like when I first started I didn't I made sure not to overdo it that's a mistake I've always made whenever I exercise in the past like I do as much as I can push myself to the limit and then I'm sore for four or five days and in pain <laughs> it's like man that really sucks I don't want to exercise ever again right this time I've I've been taking it a lot more easy a lot easier uh, whenever I do exercise not really pushing myself to to the pain where I destroy the muscles quite so bad right uh, and that makes the next workout a lot easier because you don't have, you don't have to recover as long right uh, and that's worked out really good so like the first time I exercised I only did like 10 sit-ups right and that was fairly easy it wasn't hard uh, I didn't enjoy doing it of course <laughs> uh, but I I stuck to it and after about the fourth or, or so workout I actually was starting to enjoy it um, like it wasn't so bad at that point. Wait, what did I do here? Uh-oh, I'm a little bit lost with what I'm doing. I think we need... Okay, so the button's over here. I think we need redstone torches here. So it locks the dispensers, or the droppers above. But yeah, basically, uh, what I'm trying to say, guys, is if you're on the fence about uh, getting into exercising, I highly recommend it. <laughs> it's worth it, definitely. Uh, I was just doing it more as a trial. And like, if it didn't make much difference after a month, I probably wouldn't do it as much. Uh, but I'm definitely going to continue. I think it's I think it's worth it for sure. Um, and like, I, I'm doing more than just sit-ups. I'm doing like push-ups and... Uh, I got some weights for my arms and doing back exercises. I'm trying to get a nice range of things, doing squats for my legs. Um, nothing that you need any fancy equipment for, though. Just, like, stuff you can do at home. Don't have to go to the gym. And before I started, I wasn't really sure what kind of results I would get. So just to give you an example from my own experience here, the one exercise I've been doing the most in this last month is uh, sit-ups, like... I'll do sit-ups and then I'll take a day or two break from it and then I'll do them again because you're supposed to give your muscles time to recover. I don't know how long it, you're actually supposed to. I don't know much about exercising, <laughs> but I've just been doing it like every second or third day, basically, and that seems to be working out. Okay, we got four. Four. Uh, but like I said, I can only do about 10 the first time, and after about a month, I can do 80 like in one shot or one set or whatever they're called. So in a way, it's almost like I'm eight times stronger within a month just by exercising that muscle. So that is pretty significant if you ask me. What was that sound? Was that a new cave sound? <laughs> I've never heard that before. I think because I've updated, I have the new sounds, but I'm still on the old... 1.12 but yeah anyways that's just something i'm excited about right now so i thought i'd share my experience with you just in case it encourages you definitely nothing bad about exercising um but let's get back to this so those redstone torches lock all these droppers so you can see even if i send them a signal it doesn't shoot anything out it's only when we press the button it unlocks the dropper turns the redstone torch off and then we send it four pulses, and we get four saplings. Pretty simple. So yeah, like all of these receive the four pulses, all, all six of these droppers, but only the one that's unlocked will actually shoot the items out. And in order to get four pulses, we have to run this extra set of observers in the back there, which we trigger with a trap door. So we have a lot of decorating and stuff to do around here still. Uh, is this trying this? I don't know. It's better, right? I, maybe we should put clay here instead of wood. It would make more sense, maybe. I don't know. We got a lot of stuff to do, though. Let me know what you think about uh, this part of it. Like, does this look good, or should we change it? I don't know. Today was more of a technical day, because that was what I was in the mood for. Uh, we still need to decorate this. 
I'm going to just put a border around it. I think that's definitely an improvement. Um, it's important we do technical stuff, though, and actually build farms with this base. Otherwise, we're not going to come here and, and use it, right? Um, and it's not going to have much character if it doesn't have unique farms. Like, this is something we don't have built anywhere else in the world, so it's kind of cool. Right, that feels a little bit better. This is ugly, though. <laughs> uh, what do we do about this? We save it for another day, because that is the Etho way. <laughs> All right, guys. I think we're going to wrap up here for today, actually. So here's the comment of the day. It says, I am loving this new base idea. As someone who really enjoys modular design like this, I think it's great how it will look. My only slight worry is that I think it will be a lot harder if all the slabs are stone brick and grass. I think possibly it should be reserved for garden slash outside slabs. Either way, love your work. Keep doing what you are doing. So that's a good, that's a good point. Um, I think definitely anything inside the slabs or tiles is going to be something besides grass. And I think we will have different themed areas like desert, maybe snow. Uh, mycelium, lava areas maybe. I don't know. It, it'll be easy to transition between different themes though. Uh, my concern is how do we avoid using so much grass? Like what should we use instead? <laughs> um, I really like the way grass looks personally, but I don't want it to be too much like the man cave either. So I don't know. I'll see what you guys say in the comments about uh, what we built here today and where we should go in the future. But uh, that's going to do it for today. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Thank you for watching as always. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.